this is Vivica Williams and you're watching Head to Head. Despite the great distance, the dialogue between Ukraine and Australia has never ceased and is stronger than ever. Last year marked the 25th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Trade and economic relations continue to grow as well, with Australia being the leading trade partner of Ukraine in the Oceania region. To talk more about the economic cooperation between the two countries and about the business opportunities such cooperation can provide, we're joined in the studio today by Daniel Stefan, President of the Australia-Ukraine Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Daniel, for being with us today. Thank you, Vivica. Thank you for having me. So, uh, the Chamber started in 2015. Now, and I'm looking at some statistics, some of the main exports of Ukraine to Australia in 2015 were fertilizers, electronic equipment, vessels such as yachts, and imports were some different types of ores, different types of fertilizers, as well as excavation equipment. So this is uh, three years ago. And what's changed in the export-import makeup in the last three years? A lot, of, a lot of that is still going on. Um, there have been dynamics. Uh, Ukraine has fallen out of the news a little bit uh, in a lot of ways. Um, uh, when the war was going, um, when the war was making the front page news, there was a lot more attention to Ukraine and people just sort of forgot about uh, uh, what happens here. So since then, um, the activities of the, chamber, of the chamber have continued. Uh, we did have a little bit of a slower period. Um, initially, we had uh, some great big conferences. We had a lot of support from our former uh, Prime Minister of Australia, Tony Abbott, mm -hmm. um, uh, and a number of uh, key profile uh, figures in Ukraine and in Australia. Uh, Landa Koshadana, for instance, from Horizon Capital, gave us support um, uh, through one of our conferences earlier. Uh, and. A lot of the activities that were put into motion then continued on, but continued a little bit more independently. Uh, at the moment, we're picking up um, we're picking up traction, establishing uh, stronger links with the Australian Embassy here in Ukraine, which we just met with this morning, and we're also uh, liaising with the other chambers of commerce that are currently existing in Ukraine, say the Netherlands Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Canadian, the American, um, uh, because they have fairly established footprints in, in, in Ukraine. And we're finding that there's a lot of uh, strength in building these relationships and nurturing these further. Um, out of some of our more active members uh, in the chamber, there's a lot of mining import and export, uh, especially in Australia, the, uh, the mining economy is starting to pick up again. So uh, there's a lot of demand in Western Australia and in Queensland for mining equipment. Agriculture is another sector that's coming up. And we've got um, uh, one of the missions that we've been asked to follow through with is to review property investment in Ukraine. Um, there have been some key investors that have been through this area recently, and um, they're strongly looking to bring in Asian investors uh, to the market here, and uh, they're looking to um, to establish some stronger links. So there's uh, there's there's a range of activity across uh, across all sectors. Um, another one that is picking up a lot of traction is IT outsourcing, and Ukraine as well has a very strong. Um, has a very strong uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin development network, uh, and there's a lot of uh, very niche technologies that spring from that. Mm -hmm. And that's been something that's uh, gathered not uh, not uh, not groundbreaking uh, interest in terms of changing the economy of both countries, uh, but there's definitely a very strong niche, and we're hoping that uh, Ukraine be could become a model in a similar fashion that Estonia became a digital capital uh, on the on the um, uh, in the world, uh, and, a, and for a, for a country that was so small. Uh, it definitely packed a very large amount of weight um, in terms of the digital economy, and we're hoping that Ukraine can follow through in those steps as well. Um, and cryptocurrency could easily be one of those vessels. Okay, so we're we're talking about the uh, look at from the Australian side coming into Ukraine. So what are we looking at on the other end of the spectrum? Are you what are we looking at when we look when we talk about Ukrainians maybe entering into the market in Australia? Sure. So we've got very strongly developed networks in Australia and we've been facilitating a lot of businesses operating out of Australia. Uh, but we're finding a lot of new migrants to Australia uh, from Ukraine who have developed very successful businesses and operate very strongly in the economic sphere. And these people have very strong networks in Ukraine and they can get things done 
very swiftly. Um, a lot of a lot of businesses that have come here have um, they've they've had a lot of success. Um, uh, one of my colleagues moved here um, about five years ago, and he had forty something employees working for him, and he managed to scale it up and did did very well out of the project that he was uh, that he was occupying. But we're finding that the native people that have spent their lives here know how to navigate the laws, the taxation system, uh, just have the connections um, that come to them very na natively. And we're um, establishing a lot more partnerships with those kinds of people uh, to facilitate our links. And we're starting to get a lot more, um, uh, a lot more direct involvement from the Ukrainian side of the equation just through tapping into these contacts. Very nicely. And what, let's talk about then the effects of uh, reform changes that have been going on specifically. We we'll talk about like some of the legislation and this attempt to increase or, or better the business atmosphere. And what have you been seeing as a result of that for Australian-Ukrainian cooperation? Sure. So we've got some very good partners in Ukraine who've helped, um, uh, I guess, navigate the changes and so forth. Uh, in terms of things like uh, changes to the visa, visa regime, that's been something that's been extremely helpful because uh, it's becoming easier for Australians to enter the country and to do business. Um, there are still some blockages there that I would like to see lifted in the long term, even in the medium term or the short term, hopefully. Uh, but um, these kind of things just make it easier to do business for people to come into the country to, to get things done. Um, our partners here in Ukraine, uh, especially on the legal side or on the business side, uh, have been fairly invaluable in uh, just providing key, key advice and smoothing the transitions uh, for anybody who does want to do business here. Obviously, in terms of transparency and corruption, uh, any changes that have taken place, uh, they, they always do facilitate long-term long -term trade. Uh, if people if people get burnt, they're unlikely to continue doing business. They'll go somewhere else. They'll go to Poland or to Asia or so or so forth. Uh, but we're building up the success stories and the case studies um, of of our partners that have had successful ventures here, and we're looking to market those as models that can be emulated further. And are there some obstacles that have been specific to Australians or Australian general trying to do business here in Ukraine? The biggest one that comes up uh, most frequently is um, visas. Mm -hmm. uh, it is something fairly close to my heart. Uh, I don't like seeing um, barriers to trade and barriers to tourism. Uh, I think Ukraine has a lot to offer, uh, but this one particular obstacle is the first entry point uh, to Ukraine. And if just getting a visa becomes difficult, a lot of people are likely to look at other avenues or look at other places to do trade with. So do you see any changes happening on, on the horizon? Because most of this is often related to reciprocal agreements between the two countries. And I imagine then it must be difficult for Ukrainians uh, traveling to Australia. Have you heard of anything on the horizon that may look to change this situation? Ukrainians traveling to Australia has long been an issue. Uh, there have been a number of cases that are being uh, aggregated by uh, one of our heads of the Ukrainian organization in Australia. Um, Mr. Stefan Romanov is the head of the Australian Federation of uh, Ukrainian Organizations, the AFUO. Um, uh, and he's been lobbying uh, politically to, to have a review of these cases and uh, have some explanations of why people will get refused visas into Australia. Uh, and it's been across a lot, of, a lot of spheres and often it doesn't seem to make sense. It might be people that have been to, you, to Australia already previously, they've got a perfect record of travelling to Turkey, to Australia, to, to London, uh, to all sorts of places, never overstaying visas, but then they apply for an Australian visa again a year later or six months later and for some reason gets refused. So there's a lot of, um, uh, I guess, there's, there's strength in assembling these cases and, uh, you know, putting them forward as a, as a formal case. And that is being something that's being undertaken at the moment. So hopefully we'll see sometime in the near future, as we see so many changes happening and quite rapidly now in Ukraine, hopefully mm -hmm. with this idea of trying to increase business, visas, of course, are very uh, significant and sometimes touchy subject. Yes, absolutely. And look, um, to further that point as well, um, Australians entering Ukraine uh, do need to apply for a visa and uh, typically it's taken two to four weeks to, to get that visa and it can leave a little bit of uncertainty, especially if there's variations or if something gets knocked back and the process needs to be restarted. Um, 
it's absolutely not my place to, uh, you know, to change laws or things like that, um, or, or at least I can, I can advocate, but um, uh, I don't have the power to change them directly. Uh, but I would love to see Ukraine extend a olive branch, so to speak, and take away those visa requirements for Australians coming here. Uh, a lot of countries are very favourable for Australian travel. Um, I've travelled to 30-something countries and visas are very rarely something that I need to apply for. Uh, they usually get um, you know, sorted out on the border and so forth. Uh, and just removing those requirements puts us in line with the European states, with Canada, with America. Um, and I think Australians that would be travelling to Ukraine are only, going, are only going to increase the levels of tourism, increase the levels of business and trade, and it's only going to be a positive net outcome for Ukraine. We're going to have to see how that turns out. And how, uh, on a different note, how has the, the war in the East and the annexation of Crimea affected uh, trade with or relations with Australia and, between Australia and Ukraine? I think people have tended to work around it. Um, there's obviously disruptions in uh, ability to procure certain uh, sort of certain resources or uh, certain items that did come from those regions. Uh, I get the impression, even from being in Ukraine, the war is still going on, but it's almost a forgotten, uh, it's, it's almost something that doesn't affect your day-to-day -day life. Um, well, uh, here in Ukraine, it's, it does. But people, it is on the forefront here for most people. Sure. But I understand it's fallen out um, often in the international sphere because it's not that uh, war as you see in, in Syria, as you see in other parts of the world, that very hot war. So, yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about with that uh, seeming that it's not having as much of an effect. Yeah, yeah. I think, look, um, uh, certain, certain things have changed. Uh, there's, been, there's been various flows um, uh, that have changed differently. But um, a lot of the time it just becomes business as usual. People work around the, uh, the various issues that might be in play. Uh, sometimes they might not be able to get certain, certain resources or the companies that they've dealt with previously might not be readily available. Uh, but there's plenty of other opportunities that are arising as well. Um, agriculture or, um, um, uh, um, sorry, agriculture, manufacturing and so forth. So it's good to see that yeah. that the that it hasn't disturbed the bond between the two countries, but they're yeah. stronger. Yeah, and look, the bond could definitely be stronger. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm here to develop some of those links and uh, warm up some of the relations and just, just get some of the PR and marketing out there uh, because people don't know what they don't know. And if you present the information in a easy to digest format, uh, people might look differently and say, well, look, here's an opportunity that we hadn't considered. And I do think that there are a lot of opportunities here in Ukraine. Uh, one thing that has changed over the last few years is uh, the the average wage has, um, or, or the cost to supply, uh, to the, the cost to procure labour from Ukraine has increased. Mm -hmm. um, uh, wages were, I guess, especially given the exchange rate, were ludicrously cheap for a long time, and they still are very cheap. Uh, we can source very high quality IT personnel from Ukraine for a fraction of the price that we can elsewhere. Uh, they might be more expensive than other countries, but we tend to find that the quality of education and the quality of skill level of the staff that we get here tends to be a lot higher. So there's a lot less. Um, look, look, sometimes you might pay 20% more, but you get 100% more in terms of output and efficiency. Right. And uh, just on the last note, you mentioned opportunities people don't know about. So where are you seeing uh, opportunities? What would you like some ideas that you would like people to really know? It's probably a little bit, bit too early. We do have a couple of plans on the board at the moment, and it'll be a couple of months before we uh, before we unveil those um, appropriately. Uh, there's there there is a range of import export uh, opportunities and uh, some other projects that are on the, that are um, uh, being reviewed uh, by our team. Uh, property investment is one of them, and that's something that um, uh, that's something that we're doing within a certain um, uh, within a particular type of formula. Uh, but we do need to establish some stronger links in those spheres um, uh, and present some better case studies in order, to, um, uh, in order to unveil those fully. So it's only looking up then, in short. <laughs> Yeah, look, look, we do we do have a few projects uh, that are um, that are that are pretty close to being unveiled at the moment, uh, but just at this point in time, uh, it's probably a little bit too early to say. Uh, but in a couple of months, definitely, we'll be able to talk about them, and uh, we'll look forward to um, you know maybe reconvening and uh, you know telling some of the stories about that. Well, I look forward to learning more. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being with us, Daniel. My pleasure.
And this was Daniel Stefan, president of the Australia-Ukraine Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to UATV.